Friends, welcome to my workplace for hands-on FACO and SICS training. Let us observe this totally unedited surgery. This is a case of hypermature morgagnian cataract with phacolytic glaucoma. The intraocular pressure was 64 millimeter of mercury. With anti-glaucoma medications, the pressure came down to 40 millimeter of mercury and I have taken off this case for surgery. A side port has been made and this is the main incision. I am taking care to go a little on the corneal side so that bleeding can be avoided. There is some circumciliary congestion in this case. An air bubble has been injected. Now, tripan blue dye has been applied over the anterior capsule. I want to stain the anterior capsule so that capsular axis can be done comfortably. This is a bit of adrenaline to maintain the dilatation of the pupil during surgery. And now the excess dye is washed out. And the viscoelastic substance I am using is 2 percent SPMC, that is hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. The antechamber is filled off with the visco. Now I am enlarging the main wound a little bit just by on cut so that entry of the phaco needle becomes easy. I can see there is a hard nucleus. The anterior capsule has been punctured with a sharp needle, a 26 gauss main needle. Milky fluid comes out. I aspirate some milky fluid. We have to be careful not to cause too much pressure on the anterior capsule. In hypermature morgagnian cataract, we can just puncture and aspirate. We need not do a minirexis. Usually, the anterior capsular tag will not extend to periphery. And now, I am doing capsulorexis. My plan is to get a rexis of about 5.5 millimeter because the nucleus is hard. Inject some more visco. I do not want to make a larger rexis because my plan is to use a capsular tension ring with small jerky pools. I complete the rexis and now inject some more visco and I ask for the capsular tension ring. In such cases, I have decided to use the ring at this moment itself because many cases the jonule is so weak that it detaches, jonular dialysis occurs during surgery. So, to support the capsular bag, I want to apply the capsular tension ring now itself. Take the ring, this is known as CTR, capsular tension ring. The leading end goes through the main wound. Now, I have to make sure that the leading end goes under the anterior capsular rim. At this time, I ask for a Sensky hook, depress the leading end and push it and it goes in the capsular bag. And now, I take the forceps and the macpherson's with the help of this bimanual technique. The ring goes into the capsular bag and now, I take the Sinsky hook again. The prong of the Sinsky hook 
goes through the eyelet and the CTR is placed in the capsular bag. And now inject some more visco and take the FECO handpiece. Ultrasonic energy that I am going to use is 80 percent in continuous mode. Flow rate is 40, vacuum is 400 and I am going to do direct vertical chop or rather it is a combo chop. Some component of vertical chop, some component of horizontal chop. get nice cracks. By this time all the cortex that liquefied has come out and I am having only the nuclear piece. So, I have to be very careful, I have to keep an eye on the behavior of the posterior capsule there are many instances that the posterior capsule comes forward and a rent occurs at the last moment. I have to sure, make sure that it does not happen again in such cases. I am gradually very slowly emulsifying the pieces, keeping on piece down to protect the bag and I am placing the FECO needle in such a way that I am far away from the anterior capsule and I keeping it in such a position that it is quite far away from the cornea. And now for this last piece I am going to emulsificate for the emulsification of this last piece I am going to use the IOL scaffold technique. Inject visco fill up the capsular bag, take the intraocular lens and place the lens in the capsular bag. The leading haptic goes in the capsular bag and the trailing haptic just by a push of the left hand instrument goes in the capsular bag. You just practice this, press the haptic optic junction by the left hand instrument and it goes in the bag at on shot. Now the posterior capsule is protected 100 percent. And now I am going to emulsify this last nuclear fragment, it is quite large. I have to take some precautions at this time. I must not touch the capsule, ultrasound may cause some damage to the optic of the intraocular lens. So, I must not touch the intraocular lens. I have to be in the iris plane. The lens is thin, it has gone far, it is sticking to the posterior capsule, there is lot of space. So, I must not touch the intraocular lens and I must not touch the back of the cornea. Now, this is basically to reduce inflammation. I am sure there is no vitreous. So, I have injected some kinacord to reduce inflammation. I am washing it out. Some molecules of triamcinolone acetate will remain in the anterior chamber and that will reduce the inflammation to a great extent. And now, is the time to close the case. I am asking for moxifloxacin. Before that, I am going to remove some more visco and some more tramsnolone acetate. So, using the irrigation aspiration cannuli that is the bimanual irrigation aspiration and I am gently pulling the iris 
towards the center to constrict the iris little bit and I am thoroughly cleaning the angle because lot of lens matter may be remaining in the angle. This is closure of the side port and now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. Some fibers here and there may be remaining, but that will not cause any problem. This is formation of the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber, the eyeball should be formed. I check the pressure of the intra, uh, uh, check the intraocular pressure digitally and conclude the case. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will give you some tips and tricks to manage a Morganglian cataract with glaucoma, with faculitic glaucoma. Be a great surgeon and serve your patient with love, respect, compassion and great surgical competence.